Hey, my name is Casey, and I'm going to explain how to do LeetCode 828, count unique characters of all substrings of a given string. So let's pretend that we're given this string, uh, xx, lelouch, l, xx. What this question is really asking is, for every character, how many substrings is each character unique in? So for example, let's take this first l. How many substrings uh, is this l unique in where, well, the word there's no other l's that occur right that's what it means to be unique so uh let's just put some parentheses around this and we don't even care about the rest of this uh, substring because we can't include this l because an l is no longer unique and then we just go to the beginning of the string because there's no other l's back here okay so how do we calculate how many substrings we can make out of this l and just to be clear uh what the different substrings would be would be like xxl xl le l and I know just by looking at this, that there are six substrings. And the reason I know that is because there's this little trick where you can just count, you can count the positions on the right of how to group the parentheses. And you can count the positions on the left of how to group the parentheses. So for example, you can put a parentheses here, put one here, put another one. All right, let me actually, yeah, let's do that. So that's, there was one back here. Now we moved it. Now this is two. This is the third position I can put it in. There's three spots on the left. And on the right, there's one. And then there's two spots on the right that we can put it on, that we can put the parentheses in. So the way that you calculate how many uh, different substrings we can make is just how many different ways can we mix and match those uh, parentheses on the left and the right. And that's just two times three equals six. And I feel like with that alone, you can actually start solving the problem. As long as you know you know this little trick, I guess, um, the rest of the problem kind of falls into place. So let's just do the next letter just uh, to be really clear. So let's say that I want to know how I want to know how many substrings the second L is in. Well, we don't want to include this first L because then L would no longer be unique. And we want to stop just short of the, the next occurrence of L. So now we just have this substring E-L-O-U-C-H. So how many substrings is this L a part of where it's unique? And the answer would be, well, let's just count the number of spots. Well, there's one place that we can put the parentheses here. Another spot is here. So that's two on the left. And now count the parentheses positions on the right. One, two, three, four, five. So that means there are two times five uh, or 10 substrings that this uh, L is uniquely a part of. Okay, and we could do it for the last L and you would just take it to the end of the string or it would be all of this if you wanted to figure that out. Okay, so moving on. How do we... So notice that we actually care about the positions of the previous and the next occurrence of wherever whatever character that we're doing, we need to know where the previous occurrence occurred and what index the next occurrence occurred at. So uh, what we need is a map of characters to indexes. So we want to map, say, for example, we'd want to know that the L maps to a list where it would be index 2, 0, 1, 2, 3, 4. And I'm just going to say that that third L is 9, but I'm probably miscounting. But so let's, but I know these first two are right. <laughs> um, this could be nine, this could be 10, I could be off by one. But yeah, we just want to map all the characters to their indexes. So like, for example, the X would map to uh, index zero, one, and then whatever those last two positions are, whatever these are, this could be like 14, 15 or something. Okay. And then once we have this map, we can actually calculate uh, that left and that right um, number of positions to multiply it together to figure out the number of substrings that L is uniquely a part of at that index. And then we would just want to sum that up for every character. And that's that would be our answer. So let's start by creating the hash map of characters to indexes. And let's just call this all indexes. And we want to loop through our substring, or sorry, our string that we're given in S. So i is less than s.length. 
plus plus i. And okay, so there's a cool method in Java that called compute if absent. All this is going to do, if the key exists, it's going to return the existing value. And if the key doesn't exist, it'll insert our new value and just return our new value. And that's useful uh, because, well, you'll see. Okay, so uh, compute fast. So what's our key here? Uh, the key, we want to get the letter at i, and we're going to map this. This takes in a lambda function. We don't actually care about this key. I just like to spell it out because to be explicit. Um, but so this maps to an array list of indexes. Okay. And remember what I said that this, so what will happen is if this key doesn't exist, we're going to return our brand new uh, value. It's going to insert our brand new value, then it's going to return it. And if the key already exists, it'll return the array list that we added in a previous iteration of the loop. Okay. And then we can just add in the index. Boom. We just mapped all of our letters to indexes. Now we move on to, uh, when the, for the next step, we want to loop through all of these indexes and then just calculate that left and right, multiply it together and sum it up. So let's actually declare a little sum variable and let's loop through our indexes. So we want a list of integers, indexes, all indexes. And we need to actually loop through the indexes. So um, we could just do int and oh, actually, we need we need this variable. Give me a second. Okay, so <clears throat> we're just looping through the indexes. This is size, not length. And we need to calculate our left variable, our right variable, and we're going to do. I'm going to add code to this later. I'm just typing out um, pseudocode for for a second because it helps me think about it a little bit. Um, so sum plus equals the left times the right, and then we're going to return the sum. Okay, so we only have two lines of code left. Assuming that we can calculate this left and right variable, we're done. So let's see if we can get that done. So left. Uh, so there's two, one little corner case. So let's just take this. Actually, let's go ahead and take... Actually, yeah, no. Let's take this. Let's explain this out. Okay. So this L, let's assume that we're on the first occurrence. So if I equals zero, then this would be this would be index two. So let's do indexes dot get I. But how many so this would be index two, but how many positions are there on the left? There's one, two, three. So we actually need to add one because this is index two. We need to add one to get three. So let's add one there. And the reason we need to check if it's uh, the first occurrence is because uh, for all other occurrences, let's say we want to take this. We're on, let's say we're on this occurrence. We're just going to compare it to the previous one or, or the previous one's position um, to get the whatever the left variable is. So. Let's do the let's do that. Indexes dot get i minus indexes dot get the previous guy, the previous occurrences position. Okay, so that should be done. So let's just say this was in, let's I'm gonna make the math a little bit easier. Let's say this was index two. This would be index four. So four minus two is two. And are there two spots? to the left of this L. So we're calculating this L. So there's one parentheses here, one parentheses there. That's two. That's two. So we know this is right. OK, so moving on to the right side. And we're going to do the exact same thing for the right. It's just from the end of the string now. So if i is equal to indexes dot size minus 1, we are at the end. We're on the last occurrence, which means there's no more occurrences to the right. That's why this is a special case. Um, we just want to do the size of the string, or the length of the string, sorry, 
uh, minus our occurrence. So indexes dot get i. So we're just handling this case now from L to XX. So let's actually, I'll make this example even clear. So let's just say this was index zero. There's one, two, three spots on the right that we could place that parentheses on. So if there's three spots on the right and the length of this is three, three minus index zero is three. So that gets us the right answer. Okay. so. Continuing on with the normal case, indexes dot get uh, i plus no way. Okay, so now what I'm doing here so we're assuming that this is not the last occurrence. So let's say we're calculating this guy. We're just checking if we're checking how many positions are there to our right side before hitting the next occurrence. So then we just have to do index i plus one minus indexes dot get i and that should run i think we're done did i forget a, what did i miss a line 11. oh i forgot a semicolon okay i missed something else what now oh values okay what okay what indexes get i what am i missing cannot find symbol I missed, oh, index is, I can't spell. Okay. All right, now that should be good. And so now we're done. Okay, so that's the how to do this problem. And if you like the video, if it helped you out, you can um, give, the, give it a thumbs up or subscribe, whatever. I'll do more of these. And if you guys have any feedback, um, if there's any more questions you want me to solve, go ahead and just comment below and I'll do them. Um, yeah, thanks for watching the video.